Herbert Rosenbluth, fire control in second class. Then I had to sign up for the, for the draft. Everybody had to sign up for the draft. And I figured as long as I'm signing up for the draft, I'll volunteer for the Navy uh, because uh, I don't want to get volunteered and put into something I prefer the Navy. And that's what happened. That's when my Navy, naval com career started. The end of 1942 is when I went in. Signed in at, uh, I think the address was 90 Church Street in New York. And uh, that's when I signed the papers. And, uh, but I, I didn't leave at, at that date. I, I don't remember the, the, uh, the time frame of how long it took. But anyhow, I, I did get called up. I guess it was probably not too long. I got called up and went out to 90 Church Street and we were sworn in. And I think they ex examined us. I think I had been examined before, but I think we received another examination. And I was sworn in and we uh, got on the train. Uh, I do remember that train ride. I mean, that really sticks in my mind. We, uh, it was, uh, we, we traveled all the way up to, in, into New York. I didn't know exactly where we were going, but it was a terribly long train ride. We traveled up to New York and then, then west and uh, through Pennsylvania. And uh, they parked us in the stockyards for a while. And uh, anyway, we finally arrived, I think it was the next day. I think we slept on the train. Uh, and they, and they, the next day, uh, we arrived at, at Great Lakes, Camp Porter, in Camp Porter. And uh, they equipped us and, and uh, you know, showed us all sleeping quarters, and that's when it started. We did a lot of marching, uh, which wasn't too bad. Uh, I can't remember too much what we did, but we used to do the Great Lakes Shuffle. I don't know whether anybody ever mentioned the Great Lakes Shuffle. So the Great Lakes Shuffle, Great Lakes Shuffle uh, we did it in our uh, barracks. Uh, uh, you, you got the steel wool. And uh, I guess everybody had steel wool, and then you did the, the sweeping later. And you, you, you put the steel wool under your foot, and you went back and forth, uh, like this, uh, back and forth. And, and uh, that was to clean the floor. The floors were wood, and they, they used to get stained. And that was, I guess I told the idea it was to discipline you about something. And, uh, did a lot of that, and then when you didn't do it, they did. They took you over to the drill hall, which was huge, and you did it over there. And I think it was a pretty stupid thing because you had this stuff rising, and breathing it in, and I think it wasn't a good idea. But at any rate, you did the the, the Great Lake Shuffle, and uh, I say a lot of a lot of marching. How you had a have a period of KP. Didn't last, I think, a week or two of KP. Uh, there was a time when they said, I didn't believe the story, but the, the story was that uh, one of the ad admirals had come around and seen the terrible shape that the, uh, that the recruits were in, and uh, we were going to have a toughen up uh, program. And so we were doing some really toughening up exercises, and uh, we'd go out with uh, a chief or somebody, uh, what they call a chief, they weren't really chiefs, but they, you know, they call them chiefs, and they, he'd ride a bicycle and we'd run along after him. And then you get to the uh, lake area, and it'd uh, be running in the sand, which wasn't easy, running in the sand with those heavy shoes that we had, and then you came to a, a stairway, of, I think a hundred, it was a hundred steps up to surface, up to uh, sidewalk surface, uh, street surface. And the thing was to get to that stairway first because if you were last, 
you started running as soon as you got up there. So you want to get up there and have a little rest. For, and that was the trick to do that. Uh, what else did we do at Great Lakes? Uh, not much. Not much. Uh, I remember uh, on Saturday we had inspection. And uh, different jobs you had to do. Uh, of course, you had to do the Great Lakes shuffle, get everything squared away. And uh, they would secure the, the thing was on Saturday you had, I think I told you before, Wednesday. Uh, Saturday you had the beans in the morning, and you had the beans for lunch, and you had uh, cold beans for supper. But uh, this was after breakfast, you had the, so you didn't have lunch yet. And you'd have the uh, 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 jobs that you had to do. And in the meantime, uh, You'd, then you'd line up, and if they were lining up and for the inspection, and you'd line up, and, and it seemed forever until anybody came through to, to do the inspection. In the meantime, since the, the toilets were secured and you had to stay in line, everybody was farting from the, the beans, and, the, and the, uh, the place stuck. You couldn't wait until the, the, the inspector came through, and that was. A, a couple of guys came through, they were not, they called it captain's inspection, there was no captain there at all, some ensign probably, you know, he was. He came through, did the inspection real fast, and then you were free, pretty well free on Saturday for the rest of the day. Sunday you were free too, after, after you went to religious services. And, uh, uh, take an Interesting anecdote. One of the I was Jewish. I was I'm, I am Jewish, and we had a march from Camp Porter over to I forgot which camp it was, at, because there was one rabbi <coughs> for the whole camp, uh, which, whole Great Lakes, which is pretty large, and uh, we had to wear our flat hats. And some days it was pretty cold because the winter time was pretty damn cold up there. And we got frostbitten ears. Uh, there were some of the Jewish fellows I know who would go over to the Protestant services because they were close by. And uh, they, but uh, I, one one guy in particular, I knew he was Jewish, but uh, he always goes to the Protestant services. And I have to meet him in Rockway one year. And. Uh, he says, what are you doing tonight? I, he says, when I go over, he says, they're having something over at the Jewish Center. So I say, I, I knew he was all along. But uh, just a side anecdote. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what, I, actually, I don't remember a hell of a lot. Uh, I, I, I say KP, we did KP for, for a couple of years. We, we, did, uh, we didn't have to peel potatoes because we had a machine that did that. We had to de-eye them. We had to do that by hand. And, uh, oh, this is an interesting thing. You know what a steam table looks like? Steam table was copper. We made out of copper. And after the meal was served, uh, <coughs> the guy, I don't know what his rating was, but he'd come around and he'd have what they call a bright work polish, polish. And he'd pour a little bright work polish in it and he'd go around with a rag, and he said, you see that? The whole thing has to look like that. And that's what we'd do. We'd polish the, the copper, and you'd polish the whole thing, and you'd just about be finished, trying for lunch. And <laughs> then you'd start on it, and you know, they'd use it for lunch. And I'm not too sure whether we did it again until the next day, but anyhow, it was a time-consuming job. And uh, we'd uh, work on KP serving, you know, you, and they came along, yeah, you served them in the line. 